Hey guys, so as we promised in our how to live in your RV for $30, we're we'll gonna do a follow-up video on power, because power is so important. It's funny, and we're going to all the national parks. We've already been to two um, cave tours, and always in the cave tours, the guides do the same thing. They get you down in there, and then they have you turn off all your lights, and then they shut off the power, right? And there's like zero light, zero anything. You can't see anything. And in an RV, it's funny because you go through that actually often. It's, it becomes so much more real power and how important it is, right? Having power. And so those three essentials to RV living, one is power and then water and then waste, right? And the way you take care of those three things is gonna determine how much you're gonna spend and how uh, enjoyable your time will be in your RV. So we're gonna dive into power today. Okay, so with power, we're gonna talk about three things with power too. So number one is your generator. That's gonna give you power and it should give you as much power as you need. Like if you look in here, so we've got a 7,500 watt generator and it's built in, everything, it, it works well when it works, right? <laughs> so we have had this thing fail though. So we've had this thing overheat and, and not work as well. So you've gotta be able to know like what is plan B, what is plan C? If my generator doesn't work, what am I gonna do? Type of thing. And so we'll talk about that. But um, number one power source is gonna be your generator. So with this guy, we can, Pretty much, if, we, if we're running the generator, we can do whatever we want with power, right? We can do air fryers, we can do ACs, we can do anything. Um, as long as it's not too terribly hot and we do it for too terribly long, it won't overheat. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, so that's number one is generator. So that's your main power source. So if you're at a campground, like we talked about, they're gonna take care of that power problem for you. So you don't have to run your generator. You can actually just plug directly in to the campground. And uh, if you've got, this is a 50 watt. So if you have a 50 watt, that's awesome because it'll run everything. If they only have 30 watts available, then you have to put a little adapter on and, um, and that just won't run as much stuff. And it's always good to put on um, a surge protector. So you put this guy on and that way, and just in case there's a surge or something, it's not gonna fry your stuff in your RV. So if you can, it's great to be able to plug in and uh, then you're all taken care of. So this is our inverter. So your inverter is what takes your battery power, the power that's stored in your batteries, DC, and turns it back into AC to run things like your microwave and turns it into that AC curtain like you have in your house. Even if you're not plugged in, and even if you're not um, doing things like you know running your microwave or anything, like if your inverter is turned on, it will suck your battery. At least ours does. And that's one thing that got me so nervous before we left on our trip. I was doing repairs and stuff and remodeling in there, and like batteries would be charged, and then I would come the next day, and everything would be dead. And it's like, ah. Uh, what am I gonna do? Like, I don't trust this setup, right? And so I'll tell you what I did in a minute. So here's your battery. So we've got these two batteries, which are for our chassis, which that's like the engine, starting the engine and stuff. And then these guys here, these are the four um, house batteries. So that's what's running like our light. We're running the inverter, right? They're draining these guys. So this is where batteries comes in. These aren't the greatest and I didn't even know. People were talking about like how you have to maintain your batteries. Like what do you have to do to maintain a battery, right? Um, but I learned. So you have to actually take water and, and put in the tops of these guys here. So if you look right here, the you take this off and then you can't even see, but you need to see if there's water in there. Um, so you use distilled water, but you can take a mirror so I have Holly's mirror in here and I can look down inside the hole and see if if it needs more water and no one told me that I had to do this or anything and so got it all filled up though so they all have water in them there's lithium-ion batteries which are much better and we have one of those that we're gonna share 
Come on up. All right. Let's go up. Okay, so solar, so important. So as I mentioned, I didn't trust the current setup on this RV because it seems like I forgot to leave the inverter on and then everything's dead, right? And so I wanted to come up with something that would, for sure I would have power. And so I bought this solar setup. I'll put a link in the description. It's Goal Zero is the company, but they're awesome. Um, so this runs one of those lithium ion batteries, which is awesome. I'll show you underneath and what it does and everything. But it will, if we're dry camping, so just out here, like right now, we're not hooked up to anything. Um, dry camping here, right? And so um, we're just north of Moab, Utah. These solar panels will about charge my lithium ion battery in a day. Um, now, if I'm using it a lot during the day, then it, then it won't, but I can keep everything charged. Then this other panel here, so remember those four house batteries down um, underneath, this panel charges those, but it doesn't do a whole lot. Um, it doesn't work very well. So I'll, sh I'll show you the interface for that downstairs. Um, it's more like a trickle charge, so it just kind of keeps them there. Like if you're using anything in the RV and stuff, your battery's still gonna go down. Like we mentioned before in that other video on how to live in your RV for $30 a week, maybe once in the middle of the week, we, we should do laundry anyways, right? So we're gonna start up our generator and that will also charge the house batteries and help catch this thing up. And then we can also plug this, this in the end of that type too. If, if the solar's not keeping up, and it'll charge those batteries as well in there. So let's go down inside and I will show you on the inside how it works. Okay, so this RV is a 2007 and back in that day they didn't have nearly as many electronics as we do now. So now we have five kids, right? So we've got, what, three iPads, four iPads, we've got two iPhones, We've got uh, fans that we like to use. We got Apple watches, smart watches. So all these things, if we are trying to plug that in to like our power outlets, um, our battery would be gone in no time. So this is the workaround that we do with that Goal Zero um, solar setup that I showed you and put in the link here. If you have to run your inverter, there's no way that those batteries will hold. So you could spend a lot of money and, and replace those four batteries with lithium ion batteries and they're like, you know, 1500 a pop. Um, that's a lot of money. Um, with this solar setup though that I got from Goal Zero, um, I run everything and I'm pretty much sustainable. And we do um, a lot of uh, video editing as well as we're doing these. And so we're always running that computer. And it's nice to have two separate systems because like if the power goes out or we have too much um, running on something and, and the trip a breaker, like it doesn't mess with the other computers that are plugged in. So I really like that. And this is the power cord coming out from, from the uh, Gold Zero battery. And uh, it's, it's cool because um, this cord we can plug into here, run our um, Mac Mini. For video editing, this goes up front. The kids can charge whatever they want off of another one just like this. So if you are running the generator and your Goal Zero is behind, you can also plug it in to charge just directly into your outlet there. So whenever you're running the generator or you're at a campground, you can plug in and fill and get it that way. Otherwise, I've just got this cord going out and up and going to our solar panel on top to get charged. So from that hub station, I'm pretty much running everything electrical that we have um, in the RV. And that keeps us so we don't run out of power. I pulled the battery out just so I can show you guys how it works, which is so cool. So um, it has an app, so we just have this old iPhone that we use to control it. Um, so I can literally turn off the power coming in and out 
um, just right from the app, right from the iPhone, so I don't have to crawl underneath, which is nice. Um, so here is where I have uh, a, a, an outlet going to my side so I can charge my iPhone and all my stuff. This one is the one going out that charges the computers and everything and all the kids' stuff. Like Holly's um, iPhone charges out of here and that runs under the bed there. And then this is power coming in from the solar panel. And then this is the one which is the power coming in if we're plugged in. So it works really well. Um, and this guy will basically run everything that we need to run so that we don't have to be turning on our inverter and running our generator all the time. Um, so we can just, like I said in that $30 video, I mean, we can go a week easy, um, just run the generator once, and we don't even have to do that necessarily, especially if we're getting a lot of sunshine or whatever. Um, and it depends on what we're doing, right? But, uh, but it's pretty cool because in the, in the morning, um, once we're done charging everything, I can just turn off the, uh, turn off these guys so that it's not draining off the battery. I can turn off the USB and then at night I can come in and, and so last night we charged everything up and it went from 100 down to 92. So that's charging up, you know, three iPads and two iPhones and everything. So it does really well. So that is how we take care of our own power here in this in this RV. So depending on what you end up getting, um, you need to just find what works for you, right? Um, this we found that you know this Goal Zero setup was just great. If we're having to use our house batteries and our outlets in this, it just wouldn't have worked. We'd have had to buy, you know, a lot better battery setup. This is just a lot cheaper to kind of do the same thing and give us give us the power that we need so that's basically it so you've got your your generator for your power you've got your batteries and then you've got solar options right and so you want to work it out to where you can at least go a week without having to worry about running uh, even your generator or um, plugging in at a campground or anything like that if you can the longer you can go and be self-sufficient, um, the smoother RV life will be for you. So thanks a bunch. Let me know what else you want to hear or learn about. Um, and make sure and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Share this with your friends and family who are into this sort of adventure. And we will talk again soon. And then you can see as far as power in goes, if there was any sun, it's raining and it's almost... this. RV is a 1996? 2007. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so that, that would be a really old RV. Like, okay, fine. Okay, so this RV is a. I said you can feed them grapes. Feed Ezra and Simon grapes. So, like I mentioned, it. What's that sound? Yes, be quiet. Yes, you can have grapes. Why is this going? Yeah.